All right, so there are, so we're doing sinusoidal functions. There are three main primary functions. It's sine x, cosine x, and tan x. We've used sine, like we know Sokotoa, but now we're gonna look at it graphically. What does it even mean? So you've seen y equals x squared, which looks like this. And you've seen a bunch of other functions. Exponential function, that's two to the power of x. We have seen a linear function, just y equals two x. But because these are periodic, these are very powerful. So you need to know how to graph them. I'm gonna show you what sine of x looks like first. So sine of x goes through the origin. So that's the main idea about sine of x. This one is goes through zero, zero. So the starting point, let's say this is a table of values for sine of x. When the x value is zero, the y value is zero. So zero, zero, that's gonna be our starting point right there. The next point, it's always gonna go in increments of 90. The next point, when the x value is 90 or 90 degrees, the y value is one. So at 90, it's gonna jump up to one where this value is one. And then 90 degrees later, it's gonna come back down to zero. It's gonna look like this. At 180, it's gonna be zero. At 270, it's gonna be negative one. So it jumps down to negative one at 270. And then finally, at 360, it comes back to zero. So this is the pattern. The distance from here to here between these two things, this is called a quarter period or fourth of a period. So what happens is every quarter period, it's either gonna go up or down. So we started out here, right? The next time mm -hmm. we went up, now that's the maximum of both sine and cosine. They're both bounded, the range, it's always between negative one and one. Cannot be more than one, cannot be less than negative one. And at every 90 degrees, it's either gonna go up or down. If it's already at the maximum, it cannot go any more further up. So it's gonna come back down. This line here, the central line is called the equation of axis. That's the midpoint basically of all the y values. So every 90 degrees, it's either gonna go up or down depending on where it is. And this is periodic. So this basically continues on forever. So after 90 more degrees, we're already at the equation of axis. We're going up, it's gonna go up to one. And then 90 degrees later, it's gonna come back down to the midpoint. 90 degrees later, it's gonna come back down here. And then 90 degrees later, it's gonna come back down to zero. This thing here is called one cycle from here to here or a period. How long does it take for it to loop back? This is one cycle. So that is sine of x. Every 90 degrees, it either goes up or down. Cos of x is very, very similar. The only difference for cosine of x is that instead of starting at a zero, zero, it doesn't go through the origin. It goes through zero comma one. Everything else is exactly the same. Instead of starting down here, Cosine of x starts up here. Let me just change this color so I can use, uh, maybe that looks horrible. So I can use uh, the yellow color. So cosine of x go, starts here, okay? We're already at the mm -hmm. maximum. Where's the next point? Is it gonna go up or down from one? Down. Down, right? And again, every 90 degrees, it's gonna go back down to the equation of x is gonna go down here. So this is gonna be the first part. Where is it gonna go next? Down, right? It cannot go up, it needs to fulfill a full cycle. So 90 mm -hmm. degrees later, it's gonna go down to its minimum value. So at 180, it's gonna be negative one. Where is it gonna go 90 degrees later? Up. Up, right? So at 270, it's gonna go right here. And then 90 degrees later, it's gonna go back down, um, up to the maximum like that. And then the cycle continues forever. So that would be cosine of x. Very, very similar to sine of x. If you just remember this idea that it goes through zero, one, 
then you are good. So that's cosine of x. Tan looks super weird. Tan is a difficult one, which we're not going to get too much into, but I'll show you what tan looks like. So tan, um, tan is sine divided by cosine. Now, if you look at the x and the y values of both of these things are, um, let me say sine and cos. Sine x, cos x, tan x. So, and then these are gonna be the x values. When x is zero, sine of x is going to be zero. That's the starting point for sine of x. Cos of x, it's going to be one. If tan of x is sine divided by cos, what's the value over here? If you do sine divided by cos, or if you do this divided by this, What's zero over one? Zero. Zero. So that means tan of x also goes through the origin right here. At 90, sine becomes a one, cosine becomes a zero. What's one divided by zero? You can't do that? Yeah, you can't do that. What that means is at 90 degrees, tan of x has an asymptote. Because you can't do, you can't divide by zero, so it's never going to pass through this line. At 180, sine of x is zero, cosine of x is negative one. What's tan of x? And what's zero over negative one? It's zero. It's zero. So at 180, tan is going to be zero. And at 270, the pattern is going to repeat. Sine is negative 1, cosine is 0. What's tan of x? If you do negative 1 divided by 0. You can't do that. You can't do that. So at 270, we have another asymptote. And this pattern continues for tan of x. Every 180 degrees, okay, 180 means from 90 going to 270. Every 180 degrees, there's going to be an asymptote. At 360, it's going to be a zero. And then at 450, there's going to be another asymptote like that. At zero, it's going to be zero. But at negative 90, you can also go in this quadrant. It, it's going to have another asymptote. And 10 looks very similar to x cubed, which looks like, like this. So 10 of x looks something like this. It's just going to ride the asymptotes like that. Is tan an increasing function or a decreasing function? Oh, just, yeah, it's increasing everywhere, right? It's increasing everywhere. It's not decreasing anywhere. Whereas sine and cosine, they're increasing and decreasing, but tan is strictly increasing. And here's another important thing about tan. The period for the other two was 360 degrees, a full circle. What do you think the period is? What's the distance from here to here? How long does it take for it to loop? It's looping from 90 to 270. So what's the distance between that? From 90 to 270. You just subtract them. Just subtract one from the other. You're going to get 180 degrees. So sine of x and cosine of x, they behave like a circle. They loop every 360 degrees. But tan of x loops every 180 degrees. So that's the big difference. OK? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can apply this idea somewhere. Um, let's, let's start with an easy one. So we've seen y equals sine of x. Now, what if the question asked you to graph y equals 3 sine of x? You see this 3? 
-hmm. Is it going to affect the X values or is it going to affect the Y values? Look at it this way, y equals 3x squared. Is that 3 going to affect the x values, or is it, is it going to affect the y values? The y. The val same idea here. So this 3 is actually a vertical stretch. All the y values are going to be multiplied by a factor of 3. OK, I can't seem to find the straight line tool. All right. Check this out. This is the, so if we say that's 1 and this is negative 1, your sine of x curve looks like this. And it's going to go forever in both directions, where every 90 degrees it's going to go up and down. Now, now if there's a 3 there, what happens is the maximum and the minimum, they're both multiplied by a value of 3. So 3 up there, negative 3 down here. So instead of going up to 1 now, it's going to go all the way up to 3 like that. It's going to come down, same idea as before. Every 90 degrees, it's going to go up or down. From here, it's going to go all the way down to negative 3 like that. And then the loop repeats, OK? So mm -hmm. you can transform these sine and cosine functions by adding numbers in front of them. But what's most important about these functions is the application. Which will be something like this. So this function is starting at a maximum, right? You see this? This is a maximum. Remember, sine goes through 0, 0. This is sine of x. Cosine of x goes through 0, 1, or the maximum, like this. What do you think this one is? Is this going to be a sine or a cosine if it's going through a maximum in the beginning? It's cosine. It's cosine, that's right. Now, the question is, what is the equation of this graph? Okay, That's going to be the main basically a point of this class is going to be how can we use model to come up with equations because if we have an equation right this is a height of a nail let's say we want to find the height at 3000 seconds now no one is going to graph this for 100 cycles up until 3000 what we can do if is if we have an equation we can just plug 3000 in there and get the y value and this is very important in real life as well when we're modeling anything that's periodic like the waves or something so how do we come up with an equation for this? So this is the general rubric for any function. y is equals to a times, this is going to be your function f. For us, our function is going to be um, cosine x, k, x minus d, plus c. So there's four important letters here, a, k, d, and c. A, K, D, and C. A is called the amplitude, which is the distance from the midpoint, from midpoint M is the midpoint, to the maximum or the minimum. That's what the amplitude is. K, there's a very simple formula to find K. K is always going to be 360 degrees divided by the period. C is probably the easiest thing to find. C is the midpoint. This is also called the equation of axis. And D is always, always the trickiest thing to find. D is called the phase shift. Let me show you how to find these. Step one, always find the C value. Our maximum is three. Our minimum is negative 1. What's our midpoint? What's the midpoint between 3 and negative 1? Mm 
can use this formula. Minimum is always going to be, I'm sorry, not minimum. The midpoint is always going to be the maximum plus minimum divided by two. This always works. It's one. It's one, right? So that's going to be our C value. We already have one of the values. C is going to be one right here. This is the midpoint. And this dotted line here, the equation of this dotted line is y equals to one. This is the equation of your axis, basically a midpoint of the curve. The difference between equation of axis and the axis of symmetry for a quadratic function for x squared is that the axis of symmetry is a vertical line. Equation of axis is going to be a horizontal line. So if this went through one like this, the equation of uh, the axis of symmetry would be x equals one. But in this case, because we're dealing with um, sine and cosine, it's gonna be y equals one. Next, we can find the amplitude. Amplitude is, again, the distance from the midpoint to the max or the min, either way. What's the distance from here to here? Two. Two, so your A value is going to be two. Next, let's find the period. Period is how long it takes for it to loop. What do you think the period is here? One full cycle. I'll give you a hint. You can look at it from the ma first maximum to the second maximum. And this distance here will be your period. Or you can look at it from the minimum to the next minimum. Or you can look at it from the first equation of axis to the second equation of axis. All of these will give you your period. What's our period here? Then this is the easiest. What's the distance on the x-axis from the first maximum to the second maximum? 10. 10, so that's going to be your period. And using our period, we can find the k value. k is straight up just 360 divided by the period. Period is 10, so it's going to be 36. Your k value is 36. We have three of the letters. Now the last thing we need is the d value. Now, this function is starting at a maximum, right? Mm -hmm. Cosine starts at a maximum. That means there's no phase shift. Phase shift will be zero if you're using a cosine function. So the equation of this, I'm just going to plug everything in here. Y equals A value is 2. F is cosine. K value is 36. X minus 0 or just X. And our C value was 2. Now your phase shift is going to be zero if you're using a cosine function. Now let's say, instead of using a cosine function, I want to use a sine function. Sine starts at the origin, right? But if you look at well, why that's important, is that the origin is actually the equation of axis. It starts at the equation of axis. And it's going up. It starts at the equation of axis, and it's going up. Our equation of axis was 1. So you got to find a point on this dotted line where it's going up. I'm going to use that point right there. So that should have been at the origin, but now it's shifted a little bit to the right. That is called phase shift. If you're using a sine function, that point should have been here, but it's shifted. it was shifted up and down. We've already accounted for the F shift. C equals 1 means it's moved one unit upwards, but we haven't accounted for the horizontal shift. And that is called the phase shift from here to here. What's the distance from here to here? Four boxes make up 10. That means each box is um 2.5. Yeah. So three boxes, it's 7.5. It's 7 now, if you're using a sine function, you have to pick a point on the equation of axis that's going up. So therefore, your phase shift, instead of being 0 for a sine function, will be 7.5. Nothing else changes, literally. So y is going to be 2. Instead of cosine, now we want to use a sine function. k value is exactly the same. x is just x. But now our phase shift is 7.5. Nothing else changes. At the same time, if you want to, so these are positive, right? Both sine and cosine are positive. Let's say you wanted to use a 
negative function. So how does that work? Positive cosine starts at a maximum. Negative cosine, it's the opposite, it starts at a minimum. So let's say, you know, I'm feeling brave. I don't want to use a positive, I want to use a co negative cosine. You see this? It's, it's going to start at a minimum. So I have to look at it this way, this right here. Negative cosine looks like this. It should have been over here, but it's somewhere over here. And this distance right here is the phase shift. What's the distance from here to here on the x-axis? It's five. It's five. So if you wanted to use a negative cosine, look at it. Not a whole lot changes. The only difference is the function is going to be negative. So negative two, we're using a negative cosine. So negative two cosine, 36 is the same. But now our phase shift, because now we're starting at a negative, it's going to be five. So that's our phase shift. And our C value is one, like that. Now you can also use a negative sine function. For that, you want to start at the axis of symmetry, but you want to go down. So you can either use that point. You can you can use multiple points because they all repeat. You can use any of these three points if you're using a negative sine function. Because a negative sine function, instead of going up like this guy, at the equation of axis, or at the origin, it goes down like this. And this red line is negative sine of x. So I can use any three of these as my phase shifts. We could have used these as our minimum phase shifts for cosine as well, but it's always easiest to get the first one. So now what's the phase shift here? If I wanted to use that as my reference point. What's the distance on the x-axis? 2.5. 2.5. Uh, so if you're using a negative sine function, your phase shift is going to be uh, 2.5. So the only thing that's going to change, if we're looking at this one, it'll be negative. But instead of it being 7.5, it'll be 2.5. That's the only thing that changes if you want to use a negative function. And now the funny thing is, the best part about this, if you were to take all four of these, positive, negative, doesn't matter, sine, cos, doesn't matter. And if you were to graph it, all of them are going to overlap. All of them will give you this exact graph. So you can use any of them to model it, OK? Positive, mm -hmm. negative, sine, cosine, doesn't matter. As long as you have your phase shifts correct, all of them will give you the exact same curve. Let's see what they did. I'm pretty sure they would use a cosine because it's starting at, yeah, it's starting at a maximum. The phase shift will be zero, but if you're using sine, the phase shift will be 7.5. Let's answer this question uh, for this graph. So someone's saying, or we can maybe answer all of them. It's not that difficult now that we know kind of the idea. Tanya says that another possible equation is this. Is she correct, yes or no? Mm. All right, so two is good, the amplitude is two the c value is one. Three of these letters are correct. But now let's see if the phase shift is correct. x minus 10. So we're starting at a maximum, right? Is it positive cos or negative cos? A maximum would be positive cos, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's the, what's the phase shift from here to here? Ten, right? So is this equation correct or wrong? So they're saying the phase shift is 10. They're using a positive cosine. And these three letters are correct. So is she right or wrong? She's right. She is right, exactly. If the period on this water graph is changed from 10 to 20, what would be the new equation? 
Now, using this as a reference line, because they have a reference point, sorry, because they've already given us the equation. If the period was 10 to 20, the only thing that would change is the k value, because k is 360 divided by period. Period doesn't affect um, the other three. So there's a k d c amplitude. This is just called the period. This is called the phase shift. This is called the um, equation of axis. The only thing that's affected is the k value. So the period was 20. K will be 360 divided by 20. It'll be 18. So this will be 18. That's the only thing that will change if the period changed. If the maximum value is changed from 3 to 5, what will be the new equation? OK, so if the maximum value changed, then both A and C are going to be affected. So if my maximum is 5, my minimum is still 1, what's the midpoint? What's the midpoint between it's 5 and negative 1? It is 2, yeah. So that means our C is going to be 2. And our amplitude is the distance from the midpoint to the maximum. So our amplitude would be 3, OK? So that would change if you changed the these guys. So there is a function that has an amplitude of 2 units a period of 180. So if they give you a period, they've already given us a bunch of things here. Amplitude is 2. The period is 180. That means k is going to be 360 divided by 180. k is going to be 2. So we already have both of these. And it has a maximum uh, at 0, 3. So 0, 3 means up here. So that's our maximum, OK? If our amplitude is 2 units, what is the midpoint? Remember, amplitude is the distance from the midpoint to the maximum. So if our maximum is 0, 3, our amplitude is 2, what's the midpoint? 1. 1, exactly. So this is going to be our midpoint. So what's our minimum value? It's the same idea, that the amplitude is the distance from the minimum to the maximum or the minimum. It's negative 1. It's negative 1. And so we have everything. The only C is going to be 1. If it's starting at a maximum, do we use cosine or sine? This is what sine looks like. It starts at the equation of axis. This is positive sine. It starts at the equation of axis and it goes up. This is positive cos. starts at a maximum. It's cosine. It's cosine. Now, negative sine, you can always use negative sine to model things. Negative sine starts at the equation of axis and goes down, whereas negative cosine starts at a minimum. OK, that's the difference between these guys. So for this one, since start, it's starting at a maximum, positive cosine starts at a maximum. Is there any phase shift? Are we going left or right? Do we need to go to left or right? And the answer is no, we don't, because it's already starting at a maximum, so we don't really care. So therefore, your equation is going to be, what's our A value? A value is 2, positive cosine, K value is 2. There is no phase shift, so x or x minus 0, and our c value is 1. That's one way to write it. Now, what if I want to use this as my reference point? We know the period is 180, so down here it's going to be 180. And that point there is 180, comma 3. Because it says use two different ways. So if I want to use this as my reference point, what changes? Does the amplitude change? Amplitude is the distance from the midpoint to the top. Does that change? It doesn't. It does not. So A is the same. 
we're starting at a maximum or we're using a maximum as a reference point. So it's going to be cosine. Our function doesn't change. Our period is still 180. So the k value doesn't change. What about our phase shift? Does that change? If you look at this one, the x value down here is zero, right? There's a maximum, but the x value is zero, which means that point should have been over here. This is the phase shift. What's the phase shift in this case? 180. 180. That's the only thing that changes. Nothing else changes. Okay, you can use multiple reference points. They will all give you the same curve. Let's try doing this one. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I don't want to graph like 20 points. It's not 20, but still. Let's try and come up with the equation for this one. That's what they're asking, right? Um, all right. We have the graph. Let's try and come up with the equation. What's our maximum? It's 1. What's our minimum? Zero. So what's our midpoint? 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. So we already have one thing. What's the distance from the midpoint to the maximum or the minimum? It's 0. 0.5. It's 0. 0.5. So we have A, we have C, now we need K. To find K, we need 360 divided by the period. What's the period here? Here it is once full cycle. It's 30. It's 30, that's good. Yeah, so it's 360 divided by 30. What's 30, what 360 divided by 30? Quick maths. 12. 12. Now the only thing we're missing is our phase shift, D value. I would like, to, I'm gonna show you all four of them here because it's all simple. If you wanna use this as a reference point, that's a minimum, okay? Do you use cosine or sine? Sine. So minimum and maximum is cosine, okay? Minimum and maximum. Well, minimum is negative cosine. Maximum is positive cosine. And if you're going up from the equation of axis, it's positive sine. And if we're going down from the equation of axis, that's going to be negative sign. Let me show you all mm -hmm. of them. So if I'm using that as my reference point, we know that is, or actually, let's make things complicated. If you use this as your reference point, your phase shift will be zero. And it's a minimum, so it'll be negative. What's our A value? 0 0.5 cosine k value is 12, x minus 0 plus uh, 0 0.5. So that is if you're using this as a reference point. But you can always use this as a reference point. What changes if you use that as a reference point? It's still a minimum. Only one thing changes. What is it? It's the phase shift. Because cosine usually starts when the x value is 0. Here, the x value is not 0, so we've shifted it to the right a little bit. That's called the phase shift, okay? So what's our phase shift if you're using this as a reference point? In other words, what's the distance from here to here? It's 30. It's 30. That's the only thing that changes because it's still a minimum. A value is still negative. The function is still negative. Nothing else changes. It's just x minus 30 plus 0 0.5. What if I want to use this as my reference point up here? Let's say it's 15. The x value is 15. What changes? Remember, it's a maximum. The only thing that's going to change is that, well, two things are going to change. 
one thing is it's going to be a positive cosine now. Mm -hmm. so instead of negative 0 0.5, it'll be positive because it's a maximum. And same thing as the phase shift. What's the new phase shift from here to here? It's 15. It's 15. That's the only thing that changes, or except the sign in, in the beginning as well. Now you can use that as your thingy majig as well, reference point. Let's say that's 45. Then it'll be x minus 45. That's the only thing that changes. Now these are for cosines. You can always use a sine function as well. But it's just very tricky here because I don't know what that x value is. Let's say I want to use that as my reference point. And let's say it's, it's 8 on the x-axis. It's starting at the, or where the reference point is on the equation of axis and it's going up. Do we use positive sign or negative sign? Positive. Positive. So look at this. The only thing that's going to change is that cosine now becomes sine. So it'll be y equals 0 0.5 sine. Phase shift is also going to change. So our phase shift now will be 8 units. Uh, 12 is our k value. 8 plus 0 0.5, that's the only thing that changes. The phase shift and cosine becomes a sine. We can use this as a reference point. Let's say that's like 82 or something. What changes now if we use this as a reference point? It's on the equation of axis, but it's going down. It's negative sign. It's negative sign. Does the phase shift change? It does. It does. It'll become negative uh, 82 and a negative here. And that's it. There's multiple ways. And if you were to plug all of these, you'll get the exact same curve. So you can use whatever you want. I would probably, because the least amount of work is this one. If you see something starting on a maximum or a minimum, straight up use cosine because the phase shift will be zero. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's the most efficient way to do this. OK, there were more questions. What's the other question? Mm, domain and range and the proportion. OK. What do you think the domain is of this graph? Domain is the possible x values it can take. Look at the day of Doesn't the year. Forever. What about this though? Day of year. We're looking at one year specific. So it'll be from zero to three six five. Mm -hmm. You're only looking at one year, but it does go on forever. Okay. So that would be the what you're thinking about from zero to infinity. That would be the mathematical domain. It does go on forever. But in the context of this question, because we're looking at one year, I think, so it's going to be, this is called a practical domain in the context of the question. What is a range? Range is the same for both mathematical and practical. It's between zero and one. It's between zero and one, that's it. Now let's say, um, should have been square brackets because they're both inclusive. And the next question they're asking us, what's the proportion of moon visible on day 110? Day 110 appears to be, I mean, this is the issue with this. You could always try and see, it's going to be 0 0.6, yeah? 110 is right between um, 100 and 120. So if I use a line here, Let's see how precise we can be. Maybe there. We can double check this in a second. So it appears to be 0 0.7 using the math, uh, using the graph. It appears to be 0 0.7 when the x value is 110. Now let's plug x value is 110 in any of these equations and let's see what we get. So I'm going to make sure I'm in degrees. So it'll be negative 0 0.5 times cosine of 12 times 110 minus 0, or just 12 times 110 plus 0 
and that gives me 0 0.75. Okay, so this is the precise answer using the equation. Using the graph is just like an approximation. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's the whole point of this, because we want to, let's say, on the 88th day, what's the proportion? Well, you can't get that from the graph. You can get a very good estimate, I guess, but you can't get the precise number. So that's why using the equation, we can be super precise. What are these 14? X minus 14. X minus, four. okay, I use 15. That's why there's a slight difference. It's the same thing. You can, this is by the way, these are all models. So there's a little bit of a leeway. Like, is that a 14 or a 15 on the X axis? Or is that a 14.5? It's all relative. No two models are gonna be the same. Um, let's see what else we can do. I really don't want to graph stuff like this because it takes forever. Right? Would you want to graph this? Where's it 0.85? Where's 0.83? I don't know. But this is something we can work on. All right. So on the x-axis, we have time. On the y-axis, we have stress in megapascals. You heard about Pascal in science, Pascal's law? Mm -hmm. It's physics, so if you, you'll probably do it in physics now that you're in chemistry. Um, so, What's how do we start? The goal is to find the equation here. What's what's our, what's going to be our game plan? What's the first thing you do if you want to find the equation? You're looking for the AKDCs, okay? AKDC. AKDC. I think C is always the easiest to find. Because C is the midpoint. Your minimum appears to be what? What's our minimum here? Five. Five. What's our maximum? 11. 11. So what's our midpoint? It's 8. It's 8. There we go. One piece of the puzzle done. Next, let's find the distance from the midpoint to the maximum or the minimum. What's the distance? 3. It's 3. Now remember, 8 is your midpoint, right? You see this dotted line? This is going to be your axis of symmetry. We're starting on the axis of symmetry and we're going up. Which function do we use? Sine or cosine? Positive if you... sign. Yeah, positive sign. Perfect. So we're going to use a positive sign. Why? Because if you're starting on the axis of symmetry and you're going up, your phase shift will be zero. Okay? You can use this mm -hmm. as your phase shift. In that case, it'll be negative sign and your phase shift will be 0 0.02. You can use this as your reference point. In that case, it'll be a positive cosine and your phase shift will be 0 0.01. And finally, the K value, What what's the period here? What does the period appear to be? You can go from here to here. I think that'll be one full period. 0 0.04. Yeah, 0 0.04, and k is 360 divided by 0 0.04, and we're done. So y is equals to 3 sine. Um, k value is, what is this, 144, 
one four no let me just plug this you need to multiply 360 by 25 or when you divide it by 0 0.04 so that'll be 9000 k is going to be 9000 and it'll be x minus well if you're using this as a reference point it'll be 0 and your c value is 8 and that's it for the equation does that make sense mm -hmm. is this difficult no always attack the midpoint which will automatically give you your amplitude and if you find the period that will automatically give you the k d is slightly tricky but if they give you a question like this like it's starting exactly where we wanted to start or one of the four um starting locations so yeah that's it and using this how do we do part c here how much stress was it generating at 0 0.143 seconds You just plug them in as X? Yeah, you just plug them in as X. You have a calculator on you? Why don't you plug it in if you have? And tell me what you get. And we'll see if that makes sense or not. So this is what you would plug. 3 times sine bracket open 9,000 times 0 0.143 plus 8 equals. And let me know if you get a number. I got like 3,869. So that's not in our range. So definitely something went wrong. Maybe you're in radians. Mm -hmm. Are you in, does it say deg up there? D-E-G, degree? It's in degrees. Mm. What about if you just plug this in? Sine 9,000 times 0 0.143. Now I've got like 100.441. If you plug this, you got that? Mm -hmm. Are you using the brackets? I am. Because that is not in the range of a sine function. Sine can only go from negative 1 to 1. So it doesn't matter what you plug in as x, right? Your sine will always be from negative 1 to 1. So I don't know what went wrong there. But anyways, the answer to this, the answer to part C here, is 6.63 on a calculator. Now let's see if that makes sense. So at 0 0.143, so this is 0 0.10, this would be 0 0.12, this will be 0 0.14. So 0 0.143 is slightly to the right of 0 0.14. So maybe right there. Got like a seven, I guess, seven-ish from the graph but that's not very precise right that's why we we're using the equation if you use the equation you'll get this number here cool mm -hmm. so yeah there you go that's that's just modeling with um it's modeling using sinusoidal functions here's another one this one you kind of have to think a little bit All right, so we're trying to model a Ferris wheel. Cool. They've given us some things. We know the maximum height is 11. Okay, so the maximum is 11. And that happens at 10 seconds. So on the x-axis, we have seconds. On the y-axis, we have height in meters. 
So maximum height of 11 meters at 10 seconds and minimum height of one meter at 55 seconds. Okay, this is all the information they've given us and they've asked us to come up with an equation. What's our midpoint? Max is 11, min is one. It's six. It's six. What is our amplitude? It's five. That's five. If we use this as a reference point, remember it's a maximum, positive cosine or positive sine? Positive cosine. Positive cosine. So what will be our phase shift if we use that as a reference point? 10. 10. Oh, and now finally we're missing the k value. And this is very difficult unless you know the trick. What's the period? This is all the information they've given us. Period is, well, how long does it take to do one loop? It's not very obvious here, okay? But the, this is the trick. From here to here, okay, from minimum to maximum here. Let's say, um, let's start here. You see, this is one full cycle, okay? This is one full cycle. A uh, way to look at this is maybe from here to here. This is one full cycle. Now, if you go from a minimum or, or a maximum to a minimum, what fraction of the cycle have you completed? It's only half. It's only half. So this distance is 45 seconds. Okay, that's only half a cycle. So what's our period? So half a cycle is 45 seconds. That means a full cycle will be twice as much. So right? 90. 90, so our period is 90, which means our K value is gonna be 360 divided by 90, it would be four. Right, and now we have everything. And I'm gonna use that as my reference point, which means it's a positive cosine. So now therefore our equation is, what's our A value? Five, cosine, K value is four, X minus 10 plus six. That's our model right there. You could use this as your reference point as well. In that case, your equation will be, the only thing that's gonna change is that it's a minimum point. So your function will be negative and your thingamajig, your phase shift will be 55 like that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now the question is asking us, what is his height at 78 seconds? There is no way to deduce that from this graph. That's why you need to come up with the model. Now let's plug 78 in there. And we, we're expecting a number between um, one and 11. If you get something out of one and 11 outside of this range, that means something went wrong. So I'm gonna plug 78 as X in here. And let's see what we get and let's see if that makes sense. So five times cosine of four times uh, 78 minus 10, bracket close, bracket close, plus six. I got 6.17 meters. Does that make sense? Is, it, is that in our range? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is, right? So the way this graph is gonna work is that it's gonna, if you look at it this way, from here to here, um, how can we find the X value here? It's between 10 and 55. So it'll be 65 divided by two 
it'll be 32.5, okay? Mm -hmm. We started at a maximum, then we go to the equation of axis, then we go to a minimum. So that means our quarter period from here to here, the distance is 22.5. That means when I come back up here to the equation of axis, it's going to be 77.5. And then add 22.5 to that, we're gonna go to the maximum. We're gonna go back here after 22.5, after 22.5. So it's always gonna go up and down quarter of a period. So in this case, our period is 90. So every 22.5 units is either gonna go up or down. And if you use this to double check your answer at 78, that is 77 right there, or 77.5. 78 should be a number that's slightly more than six, and that's what we have, okay? So we've done it right. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, let's, let's call it a day there for today. Okay, thank you. See ya.